idea for today are the three things you can do to improve your situation during a recession. And whether you call it a recession, however it's defined, it's going to be some choppy waters and we're already starting to see the front end of that. It's going to be parties that experience a lot of pain and there's going to be parties that capitalize on opportunity. The differentiator to which pile you fall into can oftentimes be a matter of perspective, ambition, and a willingness to undergo the temporary pains to kind of get to that end goal, to get to that light at the end of the tunnel and to see the opportunity and the challenge versus the challenge and the opportunity. The first of the three items being know your revenues and know your expenses. Before you can do more, you really have to know what it is that you have. If you have a business, understand how long are your clients committed to you how long will your working capital last? What kind of runway do you have? What does the pipeline look like going to the future? What expenses can be cut? What expenses can be renegotiated? What expenses can't be avoided? And by understanding that, you really know the positioning that you are currently in, the leverage or the ability that allows you to proceed or to pursue other opportunities. Getting a little more Machiavellian, you really have to look at your position and say, who can really cripple you, right? Who can put you in a bad spot? Who can really jam you up? Maybe it's a client, maybe it's a vendor, maybe it's a, an extraneous situation, but really understand where your Achilles heel might be. Look, we all hope for the best. I don't know who the quote came from, but hope is not a strategy, right? And so you always have to take a look at things from a worst case scenario. And if you know that you're gonna be okay during that, then you're likely gonna do much better. So understand what that Achilles heel is, get your arms around what you have, understand from the old consulting SWOT analysis, right? weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Someone correct me in the comments if that's not correct. But get your arms around that. So that's the first pillar, right? And the second thing is look for dislocations. If you think of recessions or downturns as a rattling in the cage of kind of the, the homogeneity of a situation, of kind of the, the homeostasis of things just kind of steady eddy flowing along, right? It's these types of turbulent situations, these kinds of sea changes where things are, some old things go away, some old things become more important, some new things go away, some new things become more important. But it's those dislocations, those inefficiencies, and those disruptions that create opportunity. The investment group that we follow closely uses the expression that they run into every burning house and they stay in some, right? You have to do that. You have to turn over rocks looking for gold, kiss frogs looking for princes, whatever analogy you want to use, right? Look for the opportunities that shake out of the tree as things are being disrupted or as these kinds of choppy waters can create some turbulence in the broader markets and in, in the broader opportunity set. Number three uh, is to keep running, stay oblivious in, a, in an intelligent manner. Uh, I was at an engagement party this past week and there was a lot of hubbub of the economy of all different areas and what was good and what was bad and uh, what industries were struggling, what industries might struggle and what risks there might be. And a, uh, an older uh, gentleman there who, who's run a business through many, many cycles looked at me and said, look, Arthur, sometimes you just gotta keep running. And, and that's really what it boils down to, to a degree, right? Is irrespective of the broader universe, right? You still have to get up and dig holes every day or get up and chop wood every day. And if you just can continue to do that without getting too downtrodden by the broader uh, environment, then a lot of times that gets people way ahead. You know, I don't know if it was Greg Norman or Jack Nicholas, but one of them said, right, the more I practice, the luckier I get. And there's a lot of truth to that. And the having a thick skin to avoid the depression of, of, of what bad things could be out there and what the headlines are saying. I'll give you an example. Uh, when I was finishing law school, I was looking for jobs right as the economy was crumbling the last iteration. So this is 2009. And I remember calling up Bear Stearns and the, the phone lines didn't work. And I said, no, that's funny. I remember calling up Lehman Brothers and getting someone on the, on the phone and, and saying, hi, do you have any positions? And they said, no, do you? My process at the point, I printed out from those iBanking FAQs or mergers and acquisitions in one of the old sites or chat rooms that you used to be able to find information from and printed out the list of the top 50 investment banks. And just remember going down the line, calling them. And in between calling them, I'd go to the gym, I'd go to class, I'd be shooting baskets outside, and then you'd go back to it. And you lost no enthusiasm because I didn't even have cable in my, uh, my apartment at the time. There was no news to consume to some extent that could discourage you. Yes, yeah, so it was a difficult time to find a position, but you ultimately did it, part because you just showed up and did the work every day and you were somewhat oblivious to, to some of the negativity. And look, to some degree, if the market was wonderful and I couldn't find a job, it might've been even more depressing. So, the point being is, if you don't know which way the sky is going to go, you know, there's a, there's a biblical quote that says, he who watches the clouds will not sow, and he who regards the wind will not reap. And there's a lot of truth to that, right? Just get up, do the things, and keep running. So it was a great quote. 
didn't expect to get that at a, at a, at a family party, uh, but sometimes that's the best source of inspiration. So that was good. Good, bad, or the ugly. You can sit at home and cry or you can play your cards, uh, as my uh, grandfather used to say. And sometimes one option is far better than the other. So to recap that, three things you can do during the recession to keep things moving forward as a company, as an individual, in whatever role that you serve, is one, know your revenue, know your expenses. More broadly, know what it is that you already have. Know the opportunities, strengths, and weaknesses that it encompasses. Two, look for dislocations messes, storms, they throw things around, some good, some bad, try to find the opportunities that come out of it. And three, no matter what the headlines say, time's gonna pass anyways, so keep running. Stay intelligently oblivious to some extent, and keep pushing forward. Appreciate everybody tuning in this week. Keep pushing forward. God bless, we'll see you next time. Thank you.